Thank you. Um, don't have a lot of time for this. I'm just quickly starting. Who knows like what circular economy is and could kind of describe it to your mum? No? Fairly new for most of it? Little, great, cool. I was worried I was going to have all a room full of experts. Um, a short summary of linear economy is we take resources out of the ground, we make stuff, and we dispose of it, traditionally using uh, energy from finite resources. Circular economy is where we use those resources, we make stuff, we use them, and we do it in a loop over and over and over again, continuously, and ideally using energy from renewable sources. So it's a continuous, sustainable loop. We currently operate mainly in a linear economy model. Some perfect examples are your single-use plastics, which we use for all three minutes, then dispose of them. So your mobile phones, you might use it for two years. How many people just got a drawer full of them at home? Every two years you get another contract and you get another one and you just keep going, get rid of it. Tires. Has anyone ever re-treaded a tire? Or do you just wear it down and go, oh, crazy, there you go. We just usually get a new one, dispose of the old one, um, and around that cycle goes. A washing machine. It breaks down, motor blows, do we bother to fix that one motor? Or do you just go buy another one? Throw it in the Versailles collection and away it goes. Our printers. It costs like 20 bucks for so hours <laughs> Right, Vic, just go buy a new one. <laughs> like, it's just the light bulbs. Light bulb bulbs, you don't go in there and fix it, you just throw it away, buy another one. Your carpet wears out, you pull it up, take a landfill, put a new carpet down. You get the concept, we leave it, take, make, dispose. And as a result of that, we're ending up with great masses of landfill around the world, and it's overflowing into our oceans, and it's estimated by 2050 there's going to be more plastic in our oceans than fish, which is not that far away, and that obviously has major impacts on lots of our marine life, land life, that sort of stuff. And this is not just stuff happening overseas. Just last week, a dolphin was discovered in the Swan River, tangled in plastic. It had a baby calf, which is now going to die because it's not old enough to support itself. This is very. This is not a 2050 problem. This is not an overseas problem. This is a now in Perth problem. The idea of the circular economy is those we've obviously got resources from somewhere at the start. We then use the manufacture in this loop and really minimise the waste. We want to ideally capture as many of these resources, so rather than seeing it as rubbish that we've disposed of, thinking of the materials as a resource to be used over and over again. Some examples of this, uh, Philips, like when we buy lights, we don't actually want the light glow, we just want the light. Philips has now got a project where they sell light to buildings, you, ask them, you tell them how many lux you want and how many square metres and you get a per monthly charge. They are now responsible for providing all the fittings. If they blow, they replace them. They have to pay for the energy, all that sort of stuff. You are literally just buying light as a service. This changes things because now all of a sudden, Philips don't want that light globe to blow every year or so because before they used to make money because <coughs> they blew. Now they've got an incentive to make them more energy efficient because they're paying the energy bill. They've made a, there's an incentive to make sure they can recover the materials and repair them because they now own them. You start to see the shift of how this moves our economic worlds into something that is still economic but environmentally a lot more sustainable. Another example of this is a company called Desso. They now basically lease carpet. Because we don't really want the rock cup, we just want a nice finish and our ground. When this carpet starts getting a bit tatty, they actually bring it back to their factory. They, they've designed a technique where the, the top bit can easily be separated from the backing mat. The top bit then gets put through a shredder, reclaimed, refabricated, and used again. So they basically refresh it. Every time they're selling up, they're not having to go buy new materials. They already own them. So it changes, and they've had to invent the technology to separate the top from the bottom to move to this mop. It's actually better for their business. They can make more profit out of this, and it's still cheaper than the because they're not having to replace all that materials. Another example, your washing machine, we talked about, you don't really want the washing machine, you just want clean clothes. So if we start moving away from the model of buying a washing machine and then paying for washers, uh, there's an hour leasing program where instead of buying a cheap household level, you can actually lease a more industrial one 
which instead of having a design life of 2,000 washers, has a design life of 10,000 washers. The company owns the machines, they are willing to spend an extra $5 to go for a better motor, rather than one that's going to burn out the day after the warranty period. Because at the moment, they maximise profits by you buying as many washing machines during your lifetime as possible. Whereas in this model, they actually maximise profits by the machines not dying and you're still doing washing. So it's kind of changing, it's still allowing companies to make money. Because at the end of the day, companies are driven by that, but providing our services in a different way, um, which is a bit more sustainable. The good old single-use beverage bottle. Most people don't want the plastic bottle. You just want the beverage that's inside. You throw it away at the end. And this is the idea of recycling. The idea is that you put it in the bin and it gets captured and it gets reused over and over again. That's a pretty simple concept that we all got taught back in primary school, we teach our kids now. The challenge with this is in WA, we have zero plastic reprocessing. There's not a single facility that can do it. So we've been collecting these bottles for decades, but not a single one of them have been reprocessed in WA. We've just been, as you guys may know, been putting on ships and sending it overseas. And um, China has been one of the biggest importers of recyclable materials from the curbside recycling systems globally. And uh, globally, they're taking about 50% of the world's plastic, waste plastic. But if you look at the global production, we're currently at 2015. We're around 320 million tonnes. We're on track for 500 million tonnes this year. One billion tonnes by 2020. Globally, less than 9% has been recycled. And when China's importing 50% of the waste plastic, but globally only 9% is being reprocessed, does anyone see a bit of a gap in the mass there? You start doing a bit of research, what happens over there? They've got a whole world of waste incinerants. So going back to this, if it's not being reprocessed in a new product, there's only three places it can go. Land, air, water. Landfill, rivers and oceans, and waste incinerators. They have some of the world's biggest <coughs> This single one plant on its own can do the equivalent of 25 million bottles a day, basically burnt into air pollution and a little bit of energy. That resource never comes back. That is not circular, it's linear. And if you look at all the plastic going to our oceans around the world, it's estimated that 95% of it comes from 10 rivers in the world, eight of which water the country that's been importing the world's recyclables. Put two and two together. How confident are you that plastic bottle you put in your recycling bin has run that 9% gauntlet and has been recycled into a new product? It certainly hasn't been done in WA. Um, and lucky for us, China has started lifting its environmental game. They brought in a whole heap of policies, including the banning of the importation of waste as of January this year, which is great on a global scale because it puts the responsibility back onto the producers of waste to take responsibility for it. The challenge is our recycling world hasn't really adapted to make use of this resource. Um, and at the moment, we are currently stockpiling and dumping about 1,500 bottles a second. It's 15,000 every 10 seconds. We produce another million bottles every minute. It's a massive, massive problem. And so back in October, the actual process of recycling plastic is not actually complicated. The machinery is all out there, it all exists. Someone's just got to set up and do it. So we launched Green Batch as an idea. We did it through a crowdfunding campaign in October last year, got a heap of supporters on board. We had one of WA's biggest crowdfunding campaigns. And this was literally to deal with our waste, not a new tech gadget, to deal with our waste. Um, an engineering company, Wally Parsons, had come on board. Initially we designed a, plant, a pilot plant that could do 300 kilos a week. We've now since scaled that to 3,000 kilos an hour, which plastic is really light. So that 300 kilos is about 15,000 bottles each and every hour, uh, which over the course of a year is about 130 million bottles, and over the first 10 years is over 1.3 billion bottles going through this plant right here in WA. The first product we're making here uh, is 3D printer filament, which we're giving back to schools and educating kids about where plastic comes from and getting them involved in the, the collection of bottles and that sort of stuff. But it's really just the first step of a whole range of things that can be turned 
into uh, as a result of the recycled plastic. Anything that's currently made out of plastic can be made out of recycled plastic. And lots of things that are not made out of plastic can be made out of recycled plastic. For example, if we know a state government is building lots of railways, all the sleepers can be made out of recycled plastic. It's been done overseas 10 years ago. It would be great rather than dumping our plastic into oceans and overseas and incinerators. We started using it in our social procurement and sustainable procurement. Ooh. Lots of companies and organisations have started coming on board from this project. UWA is one of our major companies that us a building out in Shannon Park to operate the facility, 1,000 square metre workshop, free of charge for the next 10 years, which is absolutely amazing. Rotary has come together to fund all the machinery inside to do the reprocessing. Echo Gas has given us a solar farm. We talked back right at the very start about renewable energy. We've now got a solar farm to run this plant uh, with gas as our backup power. And Watercorp is giving us recycled water from their treatment plant so we're not using any fresh water in the washing of the plastic. Um, so we're starting to close that circular loop right here in WA. Um, lots of schools, we've got I think about 18 schools right now actively collecting and about 160 odd last time I looked waiting for us to get the plant up and running. We've got a waiting list of schools. But just when you talk about 2050 more plastic in the ocean, no one cares more about this than the kids right now because this is what they're inheriting from us. We are the adults right now. We've never bothered to do anything about it, which is pretty scary when you think about it. Like when we were kids, we thought our parents were doing recycling. Now our kids today think our parents are doing recycling. I've now got a two-year-old who's going to be my age in 2050, which is a catalyst to get into this. Um, as individuals, the biggest single thing you can do is buy recycled materials. Like, the limit as to what we can put through our factory is how much we sell at the other end. And that's government, business, and that sort of stuff, as well as reducing how much you generate in the first place. Do you really need to buy that plastic water bottle, or can you just get a reusable bottle and use it over and over again? So there's a combination of those two strategies. Reduce in the first place, and actually support the recycling industry by purchasing stuff. Next time your office works buying paper, buy the bloody recycled stuff. The limiting for paper recycling is how much is being bought. Recyclers can do as much as the consumers demand. And um, the other thing you can do right now, spreading the word. This is huge at the moment, getting more people away. Most people have no idea that we have no plastic reprocessing do. Most people think by putting their piece of plastic in the recycling bin, they're doing the right thing. We need awareness. Our senior policy advisors for environment minister did not know we had no reprocessing in WA. They certainly know now. Um, and we're, every day, we just, sorry, our state, at the moment we're trying to lobby state governments to support this in WA. And they've knocked us back two years in a row and they've just put a post on the Waste Authority's page about a company overseas making 3D printed film out of water bottles. We've had more posts on that one comment in 24 hours than in the last six months of all their posts combined. We're getting a lot of attention now, and it's all due to consumers and individuals going, hey, we need to be doing the right thing. It's no longer, we can't just send it to another China, another country. Right now, our solutions are we're looking at a waste incinerator called Phoenix down in Quinana area, and we're also now looking at sending our waste plastic to other countries that don't have a ban, like Indonesia and Bangladesh, and that sort of stuff. I think neither of those solutions are very good. We need to take responsibility and actually deal with it right here in Perth. It's probably the end of my very short time. Um, so I just want to yeah, consider your individual use and your waste that you generate as an individual. Um, and that statement uh, around looking back at what innovation practices and trends have shaped the new economy, I was half writing this answer because I just found out. <coughs> um, for me, I want sustainable procurement, which I don't know if you've even heard of it. It's about using purchasing power to produce sustainable things, which the state government is starting to move towards, to no longer just be a buzzword, buzzword and something we actually do. It's got to be supported by government through both incentive and policy. In France, the, the government over there has just put a 10% levy on virgin plastic packaging and a 10% discount on recycled packaging. All of a sudden, when there was two water bottles side by side, at a dollar each, now the virgin one's a dollar ten, the recycled one's 90 cents. All of a sudden, consumers are going to pick recycled, creates demand, and helps close up. Great initiative, amazing. It'd be great if we had some leadership around this. Um, but then you get the corporate interests and 
Coca-Cola fought the containment deposit scheme in WA for 40 years, mm -hmm. to finally get in in 2020. But it's a system that only encourages collection, doesn't support reprocessing. So now our regional government, great for doing containment deposit scheme, finally 40 years later, but what happens to it when you collect it? Um, it's obviously got to be adopted by industry, and that's that triple bottom line, and that circle, where they don't have to forego profits, they just need to shift how they make it and embrace by consumers actually buying the stuff and supporting those in that circle model. So, thank you, guys. Bravo. When you say we, who's we? Oh, there's a, well, within Wally Parsons, there's about 25 engineers working on this. We've got a team of volunteers behind this. We've got four, a crowd of 4,000 people on Facebook. When you say Facebook. we, what, who, who are you to say we? Um, it's a community collective. Yeah, it's okay. yep. So there's no commercial shareholders no. or anything like that. It's a whole heap of companies, individuals. Um, so it's a collective. Or collective, or collective, or collective yeah. Thank you.